My name is Sarah Seagraves. I am an uh, owner operator of 67D Bookkeeping. Um, and just a little bit about my background. I graduated college with a degree in French. And I was a high school French teacher. And when my uh, first son was born, I realized that um, that schedule just wasn't conducive to raising 10 units. And so I looked into uh, how I could use those skills and pivot, because that's the word of the year our last two years, um, into something else. And I started out as an office manager um, for an advertising agency. And that was because the um, job description was Wrangler of the Creatives. And I was like, hey, that sounds like you know, managing a high school classroom. So I can do that. And then that slowly grew into more of a um, bookkeeping and finance role, which slowly grew my confidence into uh, branching out from that freelance and then starting my own business. So if you're looking at, uh, you know, this is what I used to do and this is what I'm doing now, trust me, I've been there. You go from one on the far left to one on the far right, and you can totally do it. So here we go. Uh, we're going to talk about bookkeeping basics. Um, so when you think of bookkeeping, I'm sure you're all thrilled and excited and just rare to go and dive into that QuickBooks, right? It's just such an exciting task. No, nobody likes bookkeeping. I like bookkeeping, and I'm odd because of that. Um, so we're going to talk about bookkeeping basics. We're going to talk about the financial management cycle just briefly um, and what that actually is. We're going to talk about some different bookkeeping software options. We're going to do kind of a deep dive into QuickBooks um, because that's the most readily available here in the States. And we're going to talk about how to use your data, how to use that information that you can get by managing your books um, appropriately to make good decisions for your business. Like it's not just to hand off to your tax guy at the end of the year, okay? You can actually use this information to make smart decisions for your business. Um, so the financial uh, management cycle is predict, measure, analyze, repeat, okay? So if how many of you are just starting out and you don't have any real information yet to work with? Okay, so just, just a couple of you, okay. Um, so for your predict, you're going to be um, looking at market research, okay? So this is what you think you could make, or you think things are going to cost, or you think how this is going to go based on other people, okay? Based on other businesses, based on the research that you've done, okay? If you have been in business for a little while, even if it's just a month, a quarter, a year, you're going to be able to use your own information to make predictions for the next month, quarter, year. Okay. Uh, the second step in this cycle is measure. And in order to measure anything, you have to actually have records that you can use to compare. Okay. And we're going to talk about uh, the different things that you need to do with your books in order to have those measurements. Okay. So we all know our favorite measurement is your income. Right? How much money your business has made. That's the best. That's the top number. That's the one that we really want to uh, see. Right. Uh, and that's money that your business has earned. So anytime you have money coming into your business, it is going to be an income, all right? Uh, and all transactions, all the money coming in and out of your business, more or less fit into three basic categories. And I've got a little asterisk and a little note down here. It says, okay, so there are others like assets and liabilities, but this is a basic introduction to bookkeeping, not accounting 101. So we're just gonna cover the basics, all right? Uh, then we have money going out. Less fun, but still important to keep track of. Uh, we have your cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is money spent on a product you are reselling to your client or customer. Okay? So if I run a, um, a t-shirt shop, okay, the cost of my t-shirts is going to be a cost of goods sold because at the end of the day, I am giving that t-shirt to a customer. Okay? All right? That is different from expense. An expense is still money that your business is spending, but it is money that is spent running your business. Okay? So the Google ad, the Facebook ad, the electricity to run my machines to make the t-shirts, those are all expenses because at the end of the day, I'm not giving any of that to my customer. Comments, questions, concerns about any of this information so far? 
All right, we're going to be a little bit interactive here because as a high school teacher, I know that if I get you talking to each other, you're actually going to retain this information. So I'd like you to turn to somebody near you, and I'd like you to tell them what is an example of an income for your business, a cost of goods sold for your business, and an expense for your business. Ready, go. Thank <laughs> you. 
um, landscape company has design income and then discounts given. Then they have landscaping services, okay? So they design and make money. Yeah. Can you just scroll, can you, I don't know if the numbers matter, can you scroll just to the big yeah. word, the words? Yeah. Maybe. Alright, it's not letting me zoom in anymore than that. That's much better. Much better? Okay, good. Okay, um, so we can see we've got income, and then income is broken down into design income, discounts given, landscape services. And those are the three different ways that this company makes money. Okay? Or discounts given doesn't make money. Okay? And you can see under landscape services, they have job materials. So this is um, materials that they use that they charge their uh, clients for, okay, right? This is the money that they make off of those materials, okay? And then we've got the total job materials here, so that's this down here. They've got labor, so the money that they charge their clients for the time it takes to do all of the landscaping. And they've got that broken down into installation and maintenance and repair, okay? Looking at the income and how it's broken down. Okay, oh, we've got one more. We've got pest control services, sale of products, so they probably have a home office with lots of different like, product plants and people and maps, uh, and then services. Then on this one, you've got your total income. Okay? So, talking to your partner, again, interactive. Talking to somebody near you, maybe somebody different, it's got a few new faces. Uh, talk about why would you, why would they want to break things down like this? What is the benefit of that? There you go. Okay, this is what I would call your most popular, okay? So, these are all the services, and then this one, you can see what is your most popular service, okay? What's the one, or product? What's the one thing that people are buying the most of? You can also see, okay, if I've got uh, a lot of money coming in from landscape services, but not much money coming in from design, maybe that's something you want to take a look at. Do you want to continue offering design services? If you're looking at the amount of money you're making from design services, and it's not really a whole lot, but you're putting in a lot of effort for that, maybe you need to take a step back. Maybe you need to rethink offering that service, or only offer it as a bundle and upsell your uh, actual landscape service. Okay? So that's, that's a good reason for why you want to break this down. Your tax accountant is only going to look at your total income. Okay, that's the number that they're going to put on the form. Okay? It does not matter when you file your taxes whether you made $10,000 from job materials or $15,000 from uh, design income. Okay? That's all going to get put in the same pot. All right? Comments, questions, concerns about income? Cool. After income, your cost of goods sold. Okay? You can see they don't have a whole lot of cost of goods sold. They've got one line, cost of goods sold. Because to them, it's not super important. Okay, to them, it doesn't really matter how much they're spending on each individual thing, and how much they're spending on dirt versus mulch versus compost versus plants versus whatever else a landscaper needs. I don't know, I don't know Okay? For you, though, it might be super important. Okay? If I need to know I'm selling my long sleeve t-shirts uh, at $15 each, and my short sleeve t-shirts at $10 each, but I'm buying them at $10 and $6.50 respectively, my profit on the long sleeve t-shirt is $5. But my profit on the short sleeve t-shirt is $3.50. And keeping that separate in my cost of goods sold could help you figure out, well, I'm making more money on my long sleeve t-shirt. Maybe I need to up the price of the short sleeve. Maybe I need to find a better supplier. Maybe I need to just sell more long sleeve t-shirts and keep everything the same. Okay? 
And that gives us a fund number called gross profit. So that's how much money your product or service earned you. All right? But that's not how much, that's not including any money it takes to actually run your business. Okay, that's just how much the product or service made. Okay, but it costs money to run a business. And that's all of these different expenses down here. You've got advertising. They're a landscaping company, so they have a truck or a fleet, and they have to pay for fuel, they have to pay for that car, they have to pay for that truck, that trailer. Okay? Um, they pay for the job expenses, so they include all of that there instead of in cost of goods sold, because they're probably doing a um, direct bundle instead of each individual item on an invoice. So they're giving an estimate, they're going to say, okay, we can do this landscaping job for $12,000, and then they're just including all the materials in there. Okay? So then all of those materials then get put under expenses instead of cost of goods. That includes legal professional fees, including accounting. Oh, look, they have a bookkeeper. Good for them. <laughs> they have a lawyer, maintenance, repair, office expenses, utilities. Okay? Any comments, questions, concerns about cost of goods sold, expenses? Looking at your profit and loss. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, it's very important to talk about that. So you kind of get into funding sources, like funding or outside opportunities, and all the cash flow of the organization. That's, um, that's where this is going to become very, very, very important. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you guys, uh, if you were at the last session, I think they talked about that one a little bit. That aspect, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so having your profit and loss statement, I remember it was just up on the last slide, that's the only reason I know that. Um, the, we're having some technical difficulties here. That is a possibility. Yeah, my computer bad. That is a possibility because it's technology. Computer bad. Okay. Yeah, that's a Let's see here. I'm going to pull up my slides on my phone and continue talking to you from that. Um, and I will also be able to give a chat function in the um, portal for the conference. I'll drop the slides into that as well. Okay? So that everybody can see all of those. Yeah. So bank statement is going to come directly from your bank, and that just shows all the transactions that pass through your bank um, that you can add to your bookkeeping software. So you equated it to one of the two, the profit and loss, cash flow, or the balance sheet, which one did you do? None of them? Because you said, you see that in your bank. In your bank E, yes, okay. So bank D is um, when you integrate your bank account with a bookkeeping software to make things automated and a little bit um, a little bit easier for you. That will show up and be the balance, and that'll show up on the balance sheet. If I said bank statement, I misspoke. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, let me pull up the rest of these slides very quickly. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we talked about bookkeeping tools and we showed uh, what QuickBooks briefly looks like a little bit. Uh, but there are other software out there. QuickBooks is not the end-all be-all. It is the most popular here in the States. Um, but Xero, X-E-R-O, is another great option. Um, it's a little bit heftier than QuickBooks. Um, I would recommend, if you are starting out, to use an online cloud-based system only because that's the trend that we are going towards. And most desktop systems are pretty hefty. Okay, they're pretty intense. They're, um, they just have a lot of features and things that you don't necessarily need in the startup phase. Okay, so I would definitely recommend a cloud-based 
Plus, you get the um, awesome, awesome experience of having an app. And we're going to talk about what the apps can do and how those can help you uh, in a moment here. Another great software that is free, or has a free version, is called Wave, W-A-V-E. All right, it is a freemium um, subscription uh, model, so it does have a free version, and then you can pay more for upgrades and use them uh, as needed. Um, and then QuickBooks has all the different tiers of all the different things that you may or may not need. Um, okay, so some helpful tidbits. You're going to want to keep receipts for everything. Okay? You need to keep receipts for everything. You do not have to keep the physical receipt, however. You can keep a digital copy, and if, knock on wood, throw salt, spin around, spin, you ever get audited, okay, the IRS does accept a printed out digital copy of your receipt. So you would get to say to the tax man coming to your door, here's a box of all the printed out receipts for the last whatever number of years you need. Okay? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can scan it, you can take a photo. Um, I recommend using, if you're going to use a software, which I recommend that you do, Excel is great, but you can't get reports off of Excel. Okay? So you're going to have to do the math and analyze everything and figure out all of that information. Whereas if you have uh, a software, that is just a button you can click. Okay? Um, but you can use Excel if you have very basic needs. You can take a photo, you can create a folder in Google Photos or in your Google Drive or in your OneDrive or whatever you use. Receipts, March 2020. Receipts, quarter one, 2021. Receipts, 2022. And just shove them all there. Okay? You can take photos, you can scan them and save them to your uh, actual computer, that's fine too, all right? Um, most cloud-based bookkeeping softwares do have apps and you can take a picture with the app and it sends it into the software and integrates it and it's really cool. Okay, that as well. Uh, by default, most of you guys are product-based businesses, it looks like, right? There are only a couple of you that are service-based. So, buying in bulk will eventually save you money, okay? But if you are just starting out, I do not recommend buying a thousand of something if you don't know if it's awesome or not, okay? You could end up with 950 of this relatively crappy product sitting in your mom's garage, and she's going to throw them away, and you're out a lot of money, okay? So, buying in bulk will eventually save you money, but for now, buy small amounts, Test, figure it out, okay? And then once you know, yes, this is a product that I really like, then buy in bulk and you will be able to save that money, okay? Um, so, I'm going to give you a math problem. And I need, if you are writing things down, I want you to write the top line is revenue. Revenue is your income. So, revenue minus cost of goods sold. equals, what does that equal? Gross profit. Gross profit, correct. That's not your net profit. That's not the money that you actually get to keep. Because your cost of goods sold, that does not include any of your expenses, right? The cost of actually running your business. So, after gross profit, you're going to subtract expenses. Okay, and again, expenses, that's the cost of running your business, not just the cost of your product and service. And then that equals your net profit. So that, at the end of the day, is the great, awesome number. And when we talk about outside funding, that's the number that people are going to look at. Okay? That is your actual profitability. That is how much money your business has actually made. I'm using actually a lot. It's really important. All right. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns?
specific questions about your particular business. We can do some of those too. We've got some time. So a treasurer or a CFO is what they're called in like bigger corporations. Um, so a CFO is an internal uh, chief financial officer. That's somebody that is uh, pretty important within your business once you expand to that point. Uh, and they're going to be the uh, person in charge of all money decisions. Okay. So the chief financial officer, the CFO. Um, most of the time, that's going to be you. You're going to be the CEO, the COO, the CFO. Okay. You're going to wear all the hats. All right, uh, and then the difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant, I like to say it's like if you go to the hospital and you have the difference between your doctor and your nurse. Okay, your tax accountant is the doctor. They're gonna look at your chart three seconds before walking into the room, tell you what meds you're gonna take, turn to the nurse, tell them to do all the things that they already know what they're supposed to be doing, and then walk out of the room and go to the next guy. Okay, that's your accountant. Your bookkeeper is your nurse. They're going to check in with you every quarter, every hour, every two hours, however often nurses come into hospital rooms. Uh, and they're going to actually know all of your information. They're going to remember your name without having to look it up. They're going to know why you're in the hospital. They're going to know uh, what you're allergic to, what meds you should be on, all of that fun information. That is your bookkeeper. You are going to work with them a lot more. And relatively speaking, they're going to be a lot cheaper than your accountant. Okay. All right. I am not a CPA. I am not a certified public accountant. That means that I do not file taxes for you. That means that I, my cost of my services is lower than the cost of services for a CPA tax accountant. Okay. Are there accounts that also do bookkeeping work? Yes. There are CPAs that love to do bookkeeping because they love working with entrepreneurs. They love working with small businesses. They're probably not going to be working with you because it's really expensive. Okay? But they like that work, so kudos to them. Other questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, so, um, so I have uh, actually two cases. Okay. So one starts with one product. Okay, so her question was that she had two businesses, one product, one service. Should everything be all inclusive? That depends on if they are separate entities or one. Well, so my salon is my LLC. Okay. Okay, so you have two separate EINs. You have one EIN and then your LLC is under your individual? Yeah, my LLC is under my Okay. And then I just put my, I pay my sales tax. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the LLC is run under your social security number? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so technically those are two separate things. However, if you're filing your sales tax under the EIN, that's going to muddy up some waters. Yeah, that's why I said you can make sure everything has to go to the EIN. So yeah. Yeah. It, it'll get it'll get rejected because I um, before I put out it was like an online application for a bank and I put my social instead of the EIN and it just like declined pretty much. So it once we're trying to like send this stuff back to try to file it or they're going to definitely get you separated. Maybe they didn't do that. They just took it for like a two job. I don't know. It might still it might still. Yeah. When you log into the Ohio, you want to do sales tax, you can log into this 
just as robust, it's really awesome. Um, it's kind of like a little bit the next level up. It's not necessarily geared towards small business owners and entrepreneurs like QuickBooks is. It's more geared towards um, bookkeepers and accountants, but it is still very user friendly. Very awesome has the app as well, same features that QuickBooks does. Um, and the other one is Wave, W-A-V-E, and that works on a um, freemium model where they have a free version and then you can upgrade as needed um, for a subscription fee. And those are all cloud-based. They do have desktop versions, I don't recommend them because again, that's, you know, buying an elephant when you need a shih tzu. Something big and it's a little wall. Uh, you have a question? Uh, a comment. Mm -hmm. um, the SBDC has a couple of people who are incredibly good with QuickBooks Online. Um, and I think I did five hour and a half long sessions mm -hmm. getting QuickBooks Online set up for the first time for free. Yeah, yeah, um, they are awesome resources. They have them, um, the, what do they call mm, The sessions, they have a name, it's a catchy name. I can't remember either, but they are awesome sessions. They're really helpful. The Small Business Development Center, SBDC. Right there. Yeah, right there. Down one level, right down there. Yep. If you go ahead and put the main entrance of the hub, you pass them. 